Hello everyone, this is Shongo and welcome to chapter 2 of the microservices with Spring Boot tutorial. And in this chapter, we're going to take a look at uh, a simple architecture diagram for a typical microservices environment or a typical microservices ecosystem. But before proceeding with this chapter, if you're not well versed with Spring and if you do not have a basic idea about Spring Boot, I would recommend you to pause this video or uh, pause this uh, tutorial and uh, get a basic idea about uh, Spring and Spring Boot before proceeding with this tutorial. And I'll put the link for uh, my tutorial on Spring in the description below and on the right hand side top corner of the screen so that you can check it out. So what we see here is a basic micro microservices architecture and uh, we have different clients. We have uh, several clients uh, making requests to our microservices APIs, they, they do not directly interact with the APIs, they rather call the API gateway. So the clients do not interact directly with uh, the APIs. The microservices ecosystem rather exposes the API gateway for the outside world or for the clients to interact with. And uh, the clients call uh, the API gateway to interact with uh, the APIs inside our microservices ecosystem. So the API gateway may be responsible for uh, validating the requests and checking uh, the authorization of the client or checking the authorization of the request whether whether the requester is authorized to uh, fetch or authorized to access the resource that uh, he or she is trying to access or not. So all that stuff can go into uh, the API gateway and it can also act as an external load balancer to balance the load between uh, the different instances of the APIs that we have inside of our uh, microservices ecosystem and every component is connected to the discovery server or uh, the registry server so the components do, do not directly talk to each other in a, in a microservices ecosystem, they talk via the discovery server or the registry server. So when we build a specific component inside our microservices ecosystem, we register it as a client for the registry server, as a client to the registry server. So they do, do not, even if we try to uh, talk to another API from one API inside our microservices environment, we won't do it directly with uh, use the direct, uh, direct uh, discovery server or the registry server to talk uh, to other APIs inside our microservices ecosystem, right? And here we have uh, the config server. So the configuration is separated or the configuration is decoupled from the business logic that we have in going on inside our APIs. And um, the config server holds the configurations for uh, our APIs inside our, our, our resources inside our microservices ecosystem, right? And uh, if we have to change, if we have to make changes for uh, configurations, we need not restart our APIs or we need not redeploy our APIs. We can simply run an endpoint that is exposed uh, and get our uh, configurations loaded into the API or get our configurations loaded into the project right and each API has its own database own separate database that it interacts with and there might be multiple instances of an API inside uh, the microservices ecosystem and uh, we can also have uh, different other components inside the microservices ecosystem and we can have API we, we can have different multiple instances of the APIs and we can have auto scaling for uh, auto scaling for our API. So if there is a high demand for a certain API, we can have it scaled up. And when the demand goes down, we can have it scaled down. So we need not take care of all those stuff. Uh, it can happen automatically with uh, certain components inside uh, the microservices ecosystem, right? So this is a basic architecture diagram for our microservices ecosystem, and in the succeeding chapters, we we'll learn about all uh, these individual components and see how they work. And
and in our next chapter we're gonna see we, we're gonna take a look at the discovery server and see how the discovery server of the registry server works and how we can start or how we can create a discovery server and how we can register our apis with the discovery server right so that is all for this chapter and i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you didn't please give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching